Hi, it's Jeff here from Outboard-Boat.com. I've been requested to do a video on what to look for when buying second-hand or used boats. Most important things to look for when buying a used boat is you want to inspect the hull, inspect the trailer, inspect the motor, and the electronics. Most people overlook getting um, boats inspected when they're buying them. They just take the owner's word for it that it's running well. But nine times out of ten on the boats that I've inspected, um, I've found thousands of dollars worth of, of damage or things that need to be repaired or looked at. Okay, so basics to look for on the hull. Um, inspect the hull for chips and cracks. The most common areas for the um, for there to be hull damage on a boat, what I've found is at the back of the boat, um, right right at the stern at the bottom of the V, or at the front of the boat where uh, people have been pulling it back onto the trailer and haven't had it quite lined up with the, with the rollers. Okay, so you want to inspect around the transom where the motor bolt's on. Um, look in the corners for signs of cracking. Look where the engine mounting bolts go through the transom. Um, have a look to see if they look like the washers are pulling into the transom. Uh, if the bolts look like they're pulling into the transom, then you've probably got a rotten transom or a, um, or a weak a weak transom, or the motor could be overpowered for the bolt uh, for the boat, sorry, and the um, and the transom's not quite strong enough to hold it. Okay, so with the motor tilted up, um, easy test to do is hold the hold the gearbox and shake the motor up and down, and look for any movement in the transom. Okay, there should be a little bit of movement in the engine mounts themselves, but the transom should be nice and nice and solid. If you can wobble the motor and you can see the transom moving back and forward, then uh, it kind of tells you that the transom's not strong enough, um, it's started to crack, or it's or it's rotten. Um, transoms that need repairing can cost thousands of dollars if you have them repaired properly. Uh, also, lift the floorboards up of the boat if you can, and have a look around the hull. Um, look for signs of cracking and um, damage underneath. Have a good look. I do recommend have a good look under the hull, um, along the planing strakes, and at the bottom of the V. Look for any signs of cracking um, under there. If you can see chips in the gel coat that's ex it's exposed the fiberglass, um, you really want to get a boat builder to inspect it. They can have a look at it and see if the water has damaged the um, fiberglass. Um, fiberglass gets a, a product or a, an issue called osmosis, okay, where the water travels down the strands of the fiberglass and it can spread quite quite far from the um, initial chip in the in the gel coat. So any chips or cracks, if it's not, if it's exposed in the fiberglass, I do recommend getting a boat builder to have a look at it. Okay, so make sure you inspect the boat's accessories. Um, so the accessories could be the navigation lights, the bilge pumps, VHF, any stereos or um, radios in the boat, depth sounders and fish finders, anchor lights, cabin cockpit lights. Look at the battery in the terminal condition to see. Uh, how often they've been servicing the boat. If the battery looks really old and run down, and the battery condition, the battery terminal conditions are green uh, or corroded, then it kind of tells you that they haven't been servicing the boat as often as they should. Um, look at the wiring of the boat and behind the dashboard and around the battery. Um, if it's a big bird's nest behind the dashboard and there's wires going everywhere, um, it kind of tells you that it hasn't been wired by a professional or the person that's been working on it really doesn't care or doesn't know what they're doing. So have a good look at the wiring and make sure that everything is nice and tidy. It goes to um, buzz bars or to isolated buzz bars and it hasn't got the chocolate block, chocolate block sort of twisty connections that um, a lot of just normal automotive or household electricians use. Okay, does it have a fuel water separator in the boat? If it has an underfloor tank it should have a water separator fitted to the fuel system. Um, if it's got tote tanks, it's not too bad because you can remove the tank easily and um, inspect it for water. But an underfloor tank, really important to have a water separator as you do get condensation um, and water entering your fuel system from time to time. So water and separator, water separator, very important. It does it have a battery isolation switch? So I do recommend having a battery isolation switch in a boat because if it's sitting for a period of time without being used and you do have a small drain from one of your accessories um, at least the battery isolation switch can turn isolate your battery so that when you do go to use your boat it um, it hasn't had a current drain also if you've got kids that jump in the boat and like to play with it if your battery isolation switch is off they can't really do any damage to themselves or the boats okay so outboard motor inspecting this is a 
really important part of buying a used boat. So an outboard motor inspection covers the power head, which is the engine itself, okay, the gearbox, so looking for any water getting into the gearbox, um, bent propeller shafts, any metal on the gearbox. Okay, when you inspect the gearbox, you remove the drain screws and they've got magnets on them. Uh, so you inspect the magnets for any sign of metal filings or, or metal chunks. So if you can see either water in the gearbox or metal on the magnets, you know that the gearbox is going to need some work. Okay, inspect the midsection and the engine mounts. So this is inspecting the bushes, the steering, um, the engine mounts themselves, and the electrical system and charging of the outboard motor, and the running and operation. So this is an area that I do recommend getting a professional outboard technician to inspect it. Um, with the power head, okay, it's a compression test, checking the, um, the spark of the motor, running it and having a listen to it, making sure there's no abnormal noises. The gearbox again, um, it's something that you can do with removing the, the, the drain screws and inspecting the oil condition. Take the propeller off and look for any signs of um, fishing line or nylon behind the propellers. Um, if, if you do get fishing line in that area, it can damage the propeller shaft seals. So pull the propeller off and have a look at that. The midsection and the engine mounts, you can check these by um, having the engine tilted down and, and pulling on the engine side to side and back and forward looking for any play in the bushes or mounts again tilt the engine all the way up and get and do the same thing okay the electrical and charging okay so you need to do a spark test on the motor check the operation of, of all the electrical sides of it the, the trim and tilt um, the starting system start run the engine and check for the battery charging system and checking the warning horn and warning systems of the outboard motor and the running and operation is um, running the engine, listening for any abnormal noises, um, and really taking the engine for, or the boat, for a sea test and making sure that the outboard and everything is operating correctly and as it should. Okay, I did find this website on um, buying used boats called the Second Hand Boat Guide. Um, he covers quite a lot of areas about what questions to ask yourself when you are looking at buying a boat. Um, it's pretty cheap, $29.95 to, um, for, some, for some good advice. What he covers in it is um, looking for the right type of boat from the start. Okay, he goes over the hull, the watertight security, the cockpit and deck, the interior, the rig, the motor, ele the electrics, safety gear, getting a survey done, um, everything you should consider, make sure the seller is legitimate, crew, requ crew requirements, and negotiating the price and finalizing the sale. So if you are serious about buying a, um, a second-hand boat, take what I've said into consideration. Um, I would strongly recommend getting an inspection done on it. So I visit this website, the Second Hand Boat Guide. Um, I'll put a link for it in my, um, in my description, as I said. But any questions, um, feel free to send me an email. You can contact me on, um, at outboard-boat.com in the Contact Us area. Thanks for watching.